On a chilly October night in 1959, in a car outside the Lim Hotel in Cheshire, Reginald Bevin, Postmaster General, placed the first ever radio telephone call to Lord Roots, chairman of the Roots Group in London. The content of the conversation isn't known, but what we do know is that it may have sparked the birth of mobile telephony in the UK. Behind the scenes, a group of technicians stood ready in exchanges and base stations in Manchester, Liverpool and Horwich to ensure that there were no hiccups. The efficiency of the call depended on a huge array of manpower and hardware. Calls to and from radio phones were connected manually by operators. This method, called System 1, could cope with up to 320 customers. The South Lancashire Radio Phone Service was a VHF mobile radio system, otherwise known as System 1, that provided communications between mobile stations and subscribers on the public telephone network. It was opened by the Postmaster General, the Right Honourable Reginald Bevins, on the 28th of October 1959. The post office decided to set up a pilot system to test the demand for a public mobile radio telephone service and the Lancashire area was chosen as the location and tests to determine the coverage obtainable were carried out in late 1958. The idea was that if the demand was sufficient enough, the service would be extended to other areas of the United Kingdom. The tests were planned to be carried out from a number of possible sites. The most favourable one appeared to be Winter Hill near Horwich, about 50 miles northwest of Manchester. As this site was found to give coverage as far as the outskirts of Liverpool, it was decided to extend the service to include Liverpool and Wallasey. An additional base station at Telephone House Liverpool was accordingly selected. The Winter Hill base station didn't provide entirely sufficient coverage for the centre of Manchester itself, and further testing showed that a useful improvement could be obtained by the use of auxiliary radio receivers and aerials on Telephone House in Manchester. As a result of the tests, it was decided to proceed with the South Lancashire radio phone service with a view to providing service by the autumn of 1959. While the post office provided and operated the base stations, it was up to the mobile service user to obtain equipment from commercial sources. The equipment had to meet a performance specification laid down by the post office, and in addition, the mobile service user had to obtain a license from the postmaster general. It was decided that they would use voice calling for the pilot scheme. The radio channel provided for this purpose made use of the same frequencies at the Winter Hill site and the Liverpool base station. Two traffic channels on different frequencies at each of the base stations were also provided. Additional channels for engineering development purposes were included as well. And all channels were two frequency and the actual frequencies can be seen here. The channel frequencies were in two blocks separated by 4.5 megacycles. This separation was chosen to fit between frequency allocations for other surfaces in the adjacent parts of the spectrum. The separation was also large enough to permit duplex working without needing large physical separations between the transmitting and receiving aerials at the base station. The effective radiated power of each base station transmitter was around 35 watts and the power of the mobile station transmitters was limited to 25 watts according to the licensing conditions but most actually had a maximum power of 15 watts. The base stations were operated in duplex mode but for mobile stations there was the option to use duplex or simplex mode. The base station at Horwich sat on Winter Hill around 1500 feet above sea level and comprised of a brick building 20 feet by 12 feet and a stayed lattice mast which was 186 feet high supported the aerial system. The other base station at Lancaster House Liverpool had a mast height of 86 feet mounted on the roof of the building which itself had a height of around 120 feet above sea level. The radio equipment was installed in a repeater room on the ground floor. The auxiliary receiving station at Manchester was in Telephone House and it comprised of five radio receivers and five aerials mounted on masts already in place for microwave radio relay systems. The aerial systems at the Horwich and Liverpool base stations were identical. Separate halfway folded dipoles mounted vertically on booms from the mast were provided for each radio receiver and each transmitter. There were 11 aerials in all, 10 to serve the calling and traffic channels and one for test purposes. The receiving aerials were at the top of the mast, three at the highest level and two around 12 feet below. Space below them at 12 feet intervals were five transmitting aerials, the lowest of these being around 114 feet above the ground. The test aerial was mounted some distance below the other aerials and the mast at the Liverpool station was similarly arranged 
and at Manchester, a half-wave dipole was provided for each receiver. To receive a call, the user had to turn on the receiver and adjust the squelch control so that they could hear the operator's calls to radio phone users and not static. They would then listen to the calls put out by the radio telephone operator and they would hear every incoming call for any radio phone user in the Manchester and Liverpool area and they would only need to respond when their number was announced. Once the user heard their number announced, they would lift the handset off the hook switch which would switch on the transmitter valve heaters and start up the HT power supplies. Then they would transmit by pressing the PTT button on the handset. In the Manchester area, the signal might have been picked up at Winter Hill and or Telephone House and a supervisory lamp lit up in front of the radio phone operator in Peterloo Exchange. Then the radio phone operator would ask you for your radio phone number and location and then say please switch to, for example, channel 2. They'd then switch their radio to channel 2 and then the operator would connect you to the person who called and allow them to have the phone conversation with you. At the end of the call, they'd hang the handset on the hook to switch off the transmitter and return the receiver to the calling channel. If the motorist drove outside the South Lancashire coverage area, the signal would drop out as there was no other transmitters equipped to take the calls until the service was switched on for London in 1965 and to other major towns and cities by the summer of 1972. In 1965, the radio phone came to London thanks to transmitters on what was the new post office tower and Prime Minister Harold Wilson was the first customer. The system had been launched in the Pimlico area of London and was mainly used by chauffeurs of diplomats and wealthy businessmen. The system cost £350, the service cost over £7 per quarter and calls cost one shilling and three pence for three minutes. The more advanced system 2 and 3 were launched in the 1970s, however, due to a strong demand and need to cut costs, in 1981 radio phones went automatic with system 4. System 3 continued until 1986, when it still had 3,000 users. System 4, the last of the radio phone networks, was switched off in 1988, when today's cellular mobile networks, introduced in 1985, had gained wider national coverage.